Hey guys, we want to answer a few questions. So one of the big questions we get asked a lot is what do you use for internet? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> <laughs> We actually use quite a few different uh, systems because for us, redundancy is key. Obviously, me working full-time remote, Martha working full-time social media, internet is everything. Yeah, so we started out with a wine guard that is pre-installed in our rig, but we didn't install it in this one. We did in our Valor, so I'm going to link that video, and it kind of goes through the evolution of using our cell phones and the wine guard, and that's what we used when we first got it started on the road. Yeah, now we've upgraded a few different times like everybody because we're kind of gadget people. That's how we roll. Uh, we're at the point right now where we have three different systems in place. The first is our cell phone. Yeah, so we use our cell phone and we use the hotspot on our phone or our iPad. So our wireless carrier is AT&T. Yep, it gives us 20 gigs per device. So we got 60 gigs that we can tether or use the hotspot and it works really well so far with AT&T. Uh, the next thing we use is the T-Mobile and Seago. Mm -hmm. So that's a little small portable MiFi, which is like a portable wireless device that you can give Wi-Fi to your laptop or iPad if you don't have that internet service on there. And because it's T-Mobile, the 5G system has actually been really incredible. We've been really happy with the Insego. It's 50 bucks a month currently, and that gives us 100 gigs of internet. So between the 60 gigs we get from our hotspotting our phone, the 100 gigs we get from the T-Mobile, we've been pretty happy having those as backups. The third thing we use is Starlink. So Starlink, which everyone should know what that is by now, but that's satellite internet. Yep. The satellite internet so far has been really good. There's a few downsides to it. Uh, the bottom line is since they have opened it for the RV space, it can be hit or miss. Some days we get really bad reception for a little while. It's like one megabit per second down. Um, other times we're getting 150 megabits down. So it can be hit or miss. So I wouldn't recommend that you have that as your sole system if you absolutely must have internet at all times. Yeah, so what Chris means by that is if you're homeschooling or you are a teacher and this is your job, you need constant internet, a YouTube content creator, and Chris, he's a remote worker, so he has to have constant internet. So and it also depends, like, if you need more download than upload. I need yeah. more upload, he needs more download. So we actually need a really solid internet connection. The download speed for me, like with Teams, it has a little bit of upload, but Microsoft Teams doesn't use a lot of bandwidth, so it works out fine using the Starlink most of the time for what we've found. Martha does uploads, and Starlink pretty much sucks on uploads. Yeah, it can, and it also varies where we're at, in, you know, because we do travel quite a bit. We've gone everywhere from, like, Florida to Texas to Indiana and in between, so there are times where maybe T-Mobile works better or AT&T works better or Starlink works better. The other thing, too, is that when we're in campgrounds, okay, is there tree coverage or buildings, you know, how clears it out there because Starlink needs a clear view of sight out there. Yep, got to have that northern clear view and if you don't, it's not going to work for you. So if you're in a tree cover and you're getting shade, that's great, but it kills your internet. On the other hand, um, if you're wide out in the open, it probably works really well, but you're probably going to burn yourself up, <laughs> especially if you're down here in Texas. Yeah. So for example, we were in Elkhart, Indiana for two months and Starlink was really good until the RV plans came out. Yes. Uh, certain times of day, T-Mobile didn't work that great, even though T-Mobile works great out there. The, the bottom line is after work from like 5 to 10 p.m., all of the internet systems that you can utilize in the RV are pretty sh much struggling because everybody's either online or doing work or watching TV. And that really screws with your ability to upload or download. And, and for me working West Coast hours, it became a problem. So having three different systems, which, you know, oh, T-Mobile's slow. Okay, let's try Starlink. Well, that's not working. Let's use AT&T. Okay, we're going to switch to the iPad. And it so far that combination has worked really well. We are going to be uh, setting the pep wave back up. We have a Max Transit Duo, which is a 4G router. We're getting a Verizon and an AT&T card that we're going to utilize the pep wave along with uh, Starlink. And our goal is to set up a, a speed fusion network so that we can bond all three of the cellular types to try to provide the best source of internet for us. That should be happening in the near future. Once we get that set up, of course, we'll do a video on it to show you what it is 
is and how we're going about it. Um, the bottom line for most people, if you're not homeschooling or working from Starlink and it's just for television and general internet and email, you could probably get away with just using that by itself. Mm -hmm. It's reliable enough that you're not gonna have to stress about it. It's where you have to have dedicated support uh, or internet during like a conference call where I absolutely have to be on. That's when redundancy is really important. Another reason why we're not having only Starlink, so we have the ring alarm system in our RV and we have the digital wireless um, thermostats. Wireless, thermostats, thank you. Yeah, we have Wi-Fi based thermostats and uh, Starlink of course right now is not set up to be running 24 seven. So all of the Wi-Fi enabled items that are in our RV, every time we put down the Starlink, it kills the internet. Then we can't communicate with any of our smart devices, then they're not that smart. Yeah. <laughs> So Starlink's a little bit limiting. We're gonna move everything over to the PEP wave just to get us a dedicated cellular signal that we can use for Wi-Fi when we're traveling, not necessarily from a work perspective, but the ability to control all systems within the trailer. Yeah, and monitor and... Yeah, yeah. and I mean, I ain't gonna lie, with the solar, I wanna be able to turn that AC on like an hour out from wherever we're getting to start cooling this trailer down. When we hit Texas, Whew. it was a 100 and six outside and it was like 113 inside here. Stupid hot. I yes. wanna be able to try to knock that down a little bit while we're traveling. Yes, I know we had to put reflectives up on our windows just to keep it cool in here and not overload our um, air conditioners. <laughs> yeah, we killed it. <sighs> we did, we, we overloaded the system uh, trying to cool everything down. Yeah, that was in uh, Louisiana when we stayed at night. It was 104 degrees there. Yeah, and I had a rookie move. Three ACs, everything corrected it. I'm like, let's heat up some food in the microwave. Come on yeah, now. and lights out. <laughs> so whatever you decide to do for internet, just know one size doesn't fit all and there is no perfect solution. Um, I would say I'm 98% happy with Starlink. Mm -hmm. um, I think it is what I would consider our primary internet. We use it more than anything else. And just know that right now it has its limitations. So if you do super rely on internet, Get some options and cell based internet is not terrible um, and you can do it fairly inexpensive if you're tethering off your cell phone or just you know like the little MiFi for 50 bucks. Yeah and we'll make a Starlink video out nothing too long but just kind of like uh, where we put it on our RV how we mount it if we mount it. Yeah because we're a little goofy on how we did this um, I mean I drilled holes through the countertop I oh, drilled oh, holes. That'll be in the video. <laughs> uh, okay so you'll have to watch our Starlink video because so I I did make some messes that look really good now. Yeah, so just keep in mind, how much internet do you think you need? Because I know with the system we have, you guys might think, oh my God, that's ridiculous. But you know what? We have a lot of gadgets and stuff that rely on it. Um, and we need it. <laughs> we want it. <laughs> well, we need it to make a, lot, a livelihood, but we want it because we want to be able to control our thermostats wirelessly. We want to be able to monitor, uh, really importantly, monitor Cali when yeah. we're out make sure that there's still power to the coach. All those things that are super important when you have a pet and you gotta be responsible for them. Alrighty guys, let us know what you think down below in the comments. We wanna hear it all. What do you guys use for internet? Do you have Starlink? Um, do you do what we do with the MiFi or do you use the WineGuard? Yeah. And, is that, and does that work for you? Yep, so. well, thank you very much for watching. Give it a thumbs up and most importantly, please subscribe. It means the world to us and it's how we can keep delivering content to you guys. Yeah, thank you guys for your time. Have a wonderful day and enjoy every moment.